Right, we had the CPI numbers out. 3.7%, the expectation was 3.6%. The big questions right now are, one, what is the Dixie gonna do? Is the Dixie gonna stay above 106.13 or is it gonna come down? The next question is what are stocks gonna do? So you can see that the stocks right now are flat, but what are they gonna do in light of uh, the, the CPI that came out? What's Bitcoin gonna do? Because we were at about 27,100 yesterday, and then something happened yesterday which took us down to 26,800. And I wanna talk about what happened yesterday because there is a risk that it happens again, and it's going to send Bitcoin down even further if it happens. So we're gonna discuss the risk of exactly what happened and whether it is going to happen again and how to prepare for, for it, if it actually does happen again. And then listen guys, if you feel like you're capitulating, if you feel like today you want to leave crypto, you want to watch today's show until the end because I'm going to show you something which will probably change your mind. I want you to know that if you do feel like you're capitulating, you're not alone, but I need to show you something. I'm going to show it to you at the end of the show. It's one indicator that I found. And I promise you when you see it, you may, 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 may just change your mind. In fact, not may, you will change your mind. So, so bear with me and stay here and watch the show till the end. And then lastly, what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about this girl over here. My name is Caroline and today hold on, we're going to be talking about I, I want to talk about this girl over here. So I want to talk about her. Caroline and today we're going to be talking about scary stories. I want to talk about Caroline and a scary story because maybe, maybe, maybe her testimony is going to put SPF in jail for life. So I'm going to show you why she may be putting SPF in jail for life. Her ex-boyfriend, by the way. So we've got lots to do today on the CPI day. Let's go, guys. Alrighty, day six of the war. We are back, we're giving you live coverage. We are gonna cover the war today. We are gonna cover how it's affecting Bitcoin. We're gonna be touching on the war each and every day until this war starts to come to calm down or until something happens because everything that happens in this war actually affects Bitcoin. I'm gonna remind you that yesterday, when we left the show, we were trading uh, somewhere around here. So we were trading at about 27,100 when we left the show yesterday. Today, when you look at where we are today, we at 26,776. What actually happened? What actually took that down? Because that's a risk that actually could surface again. And I wanna explain the risk to you so that you understand the risk and you can make decisions based on it. Also, as I said, I think the big part of the show today is, is what, what we're talking about over there which it's, this is a green screen, so it's very hard for me to point where the TV is because there's actually no TV. It's like the weatherman. You know, like the, you know, like when the weatherman points at the weather, it's exactly the same thing. So um, I want to talk about crypto capitulation because we are experiencing a crypto capitulation. Most people have left crypto. Um, most money has left crypto. Most interest has left crypto. Uh, and if you are here and if you are thinking of leaving crypto, um, we need to talk because I'm going to show you something that is happening in the background, which I think the... The most exciting indicator that I've seen to show that something is about to happen in crypto and it's, it's going to be something big. I also do want to talk about the ETF today. I think the ETF could be here as soon as the next 30 days. And I'm going to talk to you about why I think the ETF is going to be here in the next 30 days. So listen, welcome back. Um, I see that there are a lot of people here. Gabby, the DJ, and I see you saying stop the war. I agree with you. I wish that they would stop the war. And if they're not going to stop the war, I wish they would just, taking, I, I wish they would just stop taking innocent lives. I think... Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a, a personal story. And I know you guys have heard these personal stories, but I have a very good friend who is it, what, it, who lives in South Africa with me or who grew up with me in South Africa. We're very good friends. And uh, his parents were on one of the kibbutzim, which were, which were taken over by the terrorists. And yesterday he flew back to Israel and had to identify the bodies of his parents and his brother. Um, he managed to identify his brother's body. He he didn't manage to identify his parents' bodies because the parents' bodies were so um, just burnt, destroyed. So yeah, so we, I just hope that, I mean, I want this war to stop, um, but mainly I just want civilians to stop being hurt. I just want civilians to stop being hurt. Anyway, let's carry on with the show. Let's try and make it a little, a little bit more about crypto. As I mentioned to you, this war is very, very, very personal to me. Uh, friends, friends of friends, etc. And there's going to be casualties on both sides. And I'm, and I'm, 
I'm cognizant of the casualties on both sides and I don't condone the casualties on either side. Um, I think humans are humans. I think women are women. I think kids are kids. And regardless of whether which side of the of the war they're on, they're not. They shouldn't be involved in this war. We shouldn't be doing civilians. And actually, funny enough, I don't really agree agree much with Putin. But but Putin actually said exactly the same thing. Funny enough. Если уж мужчины решили между собой бороться, пусть борются между собой. Детей, женщин оставьте в покое. Это касается обеих сторон. То, что происходит, это ужасно. Мы понимаем, что yeah, it's just look, you know, you, you know, if there's going to be a war, let the men go to war. And I, I mean, I don't like wars, but let the men go to war. Leave the women alone. Leave the, 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 the children alone. Leave the elderly alone. Leave the civilians out of it. Anyway, let's go back to crypto because otherwise we're going to get swept up in politics and war. And we here we want to just spread love. Even though we are dying inside, we continue and we continue to, be, to bring you guys crypto love and, and crypto wisdom each and every single day. Each and every single day we'll continue to do so. So, uh, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, it's not always this depressing, I promise. Uh, subscribe to our channel now. Um, uh, also, let's smash the likes. When we get to 1,200 likes, because yesterday we got to 1,000 likes, I'm going to show you that one indicator that's, gonna, that's going to convince you that we may be seeing a bull run much sooner than you actually think. And this is not the time to capitulate. And if you are thinking of capitulating, I'm going to show you why now is probably the best time to actually not leave crypto. I know it feels like you want to leave crypto. And even for me, like I look at crypto and go like, wow, like can I go through another so many more months of this? And I'm going to show you what actually keeps me going here, what actually keeps me going here. But let's go into the news and let's talk about what happened uh, yesterday. So um, we had the chart. We had Bitcoin trading at $27,100. Let me just go to the Bitcoin chart and not the USD chart. There it is. So we had Bitcoin trading at $27,100 or, or there or thereabout. We, we then dropped to where we are now, which is 26,754. 6, 26, what happened? What dropped the price of Bitcoin? Well, what we heard yesterday, it was a false alarm, but what we heard was that Israel was being attacked by the, from the north. And I'll show you what, the, what happened. Today, I'm afraid, but we have a line of breaking news from Israel, which is that Israel has urged its citizens in the north to shelter after hostile aircraft entered the country from Lebanon. We'll have more on that in the news hour at five o'clock our time. So that is what caused the price to go down. What they thought was happening, what they thought was happening is that Israel was also being attacked from the north. So this is a map of Israel. We've spoken about it a few times. The blue part, the light blue part here is Israel. The, the red parts are what you call Palestine or the West Bank. And then on the top, you've got Lebanon. Now, right now, the enemy that's being fought is Hamas. And Hamas is primarily based here in Gaza. The wars, they, they infiltrated the Gaza, the Gaza border. Let's see if we can get a better picture than that. So, okay, you can't see Gaza on, on this map. But they, the Hamas are basically based here in Gaza. Now, what the big concern is in the war is that from the north a new enemy, which is another terrorist enemy against Israel, which is called Hezbollah, will start bombing from the north. And then that will open the war on both fronts. So what, what happened yesterday was they thought that there were 15 drones coming from Lebanon. And as a result of that, they thought that maybe Hezbollah had entered the war. Right now, the, the, the world is very, very, very scared that Hezbollah will start entering the war. And the reason why they said they're scared that Hezbollah will start entering the war is because then you're getting a war from the north, you're getting a, a war from, from, from um, the Gaza Strip, and then people are scared that, of course, Syria and Iran and all, and all the rest will just jump in and then it'll become, I mean, it could even become as bad as a world war because now you've got the United States coming in and saying, look, we're very, very, very much behind um uh, behind Israel, you've got the U.S. Secretary of State going into Israel today um, it, it, and having a meeting with President Netanyahu. So that is that was the risk. Now it remain. The reason why I say we've got to be careful is because it remains a risk. At any point in time, the Hezbollah may actually strike. We don't know if they will, but at any point in time, they may actually strike. And what we saw yesterday is that when the market was scared that Hezbollah was going to strike, the first thing that went down was Bitcoin. The markets didn't go down. But the risk assets, the Bitcoin asset went down. It just shows, what that shows is it shows that there is very little liquidity right now in Bitcoin. And as a result of the fact that there's very little liquidity in Bitcoin, whenever there is a little tremor in the world, in any part of the world, then what happens is people start selling their Bitcoin. Now, if there was more liquidity, if there was more interest in crypto, that wouldn't be a problem because it'd be buyers and sellers. But because 
we are going through this capitulation right now, there's very little interest in crypto. And as a result, there's very few buyers, which makes it very, very illiquid. And that is why, why we have to watch out. If you're here now and you're, 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 you're in this, be in this, but know that there is a chance that there's going to be another invasion. And if there is another invasion, then you need to understand that there is a risk that the price of Bitcoin will go up, uh, will go down. And that's what it is. What happened yesterday that was quite interesting, because as soon as the price went up in Bitcoin, what we saw is we saw something happen. We saw a lot of leveraged buying happening. So what was the leverage buying that actually started happening? First of all, we saw the open interest go up, which means that leverage actually went up, which means that when the price came down, people took leverage bets that Bitcoin was going to go up. You can see that in, in many indicators. One, you can see it in the increase in, in open interest. You can also see it in the funding rate. You can see the funding rates went green. What does green funding rates mean? It means that there's a lot of people that want to take Bitcoin, leverage Bitcoin bets, and therefore the funding rate goes up. And right now where we are, as you can see, the funding rate has started to go up and the open interest has started to go up. So that's what happened yesterday. And that is why I say, look, there is a risk that it could happen again. You, we need to discuss the risks. Then you need to make a decision as to what you want to do. Either you want to be buying the dip or you want to say, look, I, I, I'm going to capitulate. I, I can't be here. I'm at the point where, where I can't be here. Because right now we have, this is where we are right now. Right now we are in October. As it stands in October, let's quickly just go to where it stands in October. I wanna, I'll, I'll show you the chart in a second. Uh, here it is. As it stands in October, let it boot up. Come on, Bitcoin. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. So right now, as it stands in October, we had a good September. October is now less, just less than 1% 1, 1 down. Uh, remember, October is supposed to be a very good month for Bitcoin. The average return is about 27.9%. Right now, we're even Stevens for October. But we have two problems. I'll tell you what the two problems are. The first problem that we have is altcoins. So most of us are actually in altcoins. Most of us hold a, a portion of our, our portfolios in Bitcoin. And I know, and tell me in the comments if I'm right or not. Tell me in the comments if I'm right or not. But I know that a lot of you guys are holding the majority of your portfolio actually in altcoins, right? Let me know in the comments if I'm right, because I know you guys. Okay, I see Ricardo says, hi, I'm from Tel Aviv. Caroline is Miss USA. Let me know in the comments um, uh, how much of your portfolio is in Bitcoin versus altcoins, right? Let, let's Because let's talk about it, because I know that a lot of us have got a lot of our money. I've got more money in altcoins than I've got in Bitcoin. And the problem is that even though Bitcoin right now is here, equal, and, and after a 4% increase in September, right? The problem is that most of our money is in altcoins. What does that actually mean? What does that actually mean? Well, we can see the Bitcoin dominance has gone up to 51%. We can see the bubbles on the one week time frame. Um, you can see the bubbles on the one-week time frame. Not pretty false. Not pretty false. On the one month, okay, but on the last week, the last week has been brutal. For mo look at Rune up down 25%. Look at Rollbit 17.6% down. Solana 8% down. It's been a brutal, brutal, brutal week for altcoins. That is the first problem that we're having. You can also see when you look at altcoins that if you look at the big victory that we had, which was the XRP court case on the 13th of June. Let's see where the price of XRP was on the 13th of June. The price of XRP was 47 cents. We're back at 47 cents. So we've retraced this whole gain. We've come back and basically altcoins have been obliterated. So that is the, the first problem that we have. The second problem that we have is capitulation. We are right now experiencing a crypto capitulation. When I say crypto capitulation, I mean people are leaving crypto. They're leaving crypto because they are apathetic. They don't care about crypto anymore. They're leaving crypto because they've lost so much money and every time they come back into crypto and there's a green candle, they think they're gonna make their money back and then they lose their money. And so as a result, what we're getting now is we're getting a crypto capitulation. I've seen it before, I'm seeing it again. Capitulation doesn't mean that the price goes down and we all lose our money. That is not a capitulation. This is a capitulation, which we're going to call a time-based capitulation. It's, it's, it's the difference between the price going down very fast and the time-based capitulation, which is this period over here. This is the part that we're in now. This is the part that kills you the most. 
It's called death by a thousand cuts. It's it's like it's just slightly down and 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 slightly down until eventually you just don't give a shit about crypto anymore and you just want to leave. And that is exactly what people are doing. We're seeing it everywhere. I saw the numbers on Coin Market Cap. I saw the numbers on Coin Gecko. I saw the numbers on on banter bubbles and crypto bubbles. We have 50% of the user base that we had uh, three months ago. Why? Because the rest have just left. They don't care anymore. They don't care to look at crypto prices anymore. The good news is, though, there's a lot of good news. I'm going to show you one very, 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 very good piece of good news at the end of the show, only if we get up to 1,200 likes. Otherwise, we're not discussing it. Um, But that's going to completely, completely, completely change your mind. The reality is that right now, though, we are going through this time-based capitulation. Capitulation, though, is traditionally known for one thing. Capitulation is known as the best time to be entering a market. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Capitulation, when everyone capitulates, that is the best time to be entering a market. Actually, as a matter of interest, I just want to quickly Google the word capitulation and see how it is capitula- capitulation. Let's, def- let's see, meaning. Meaning of capitulation. The action of ceasing to resist an opponent or demand. That's exactly how we feel about the market. We, we, we give up, we surrender. We don't want to be here anymore. Look around you, isn't that what's happening right now? People just don't want to be anymore, they surrender. I surrender, I tried this crypto thing, it didn't work for me, it's, 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 it's game over. And I'm gonna read you a quick tweet by Miles. Miles writes very good tweets. It says, Bitcoin dominance rising, altcoins getting smashed, liquidity is drying up, retail completely vanished, good news has no impact on prices. This is actually a typical market behavior in this market cycle. We're in the most difficult phase where the time capitulation really starts to set in. Sustained bleeding impacts investor confidence more than a a swift decline. For that reason, most retail participants have opted out. They're either out of cash or completely apathetic to the market. They have capitulated. They have surrendered. They've ceased to the market. Okay, how do you approach this? Firstly, accept that Bitcoin is likely to lead the early stages of a bull run. Then many of next year's catalysts are Bitcoin specific. And although there are clear clear flow on effects into other assets, it's not wise to phase Bitcoin during this period. Thus, investing solely in altcoins isn't probably advisable. I'd employ a top-down approach to the market, starting off with BTC and ETH. And I think he is right here. And I'll show you another reason why I think he's right here. So in the capitulation, you can see that right now, nobody's interested in crypto. We've spoken about this. Nobody's interested in crypto anymore. Look at the searches. I'll show you another thing. Look at the VC funding on crypto. Hasn't been this low since before the 2017 bull market. I mean, look at that. In 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 this in in September, I think there was, there was 300. Look at look at look at how low it, is. it has been that that low, but it is approaching the lows of the cycle. And remember, yesterday we spoke about this tweet over here, which comes from Andre from uh, DWF, which are good good market makers and good market manipulators. They're good market makers and good market manipulators. Um, don't tell him I said that. Um, he says. Why am I bullish part two? Those who deployed capital in 2020 received their tokens in 2021, made a fortune. Those who did it one year after got wrecked. The difference in time between buying is now and in one year. If you wait one year to start buying, you're going to be wrecked if you, if you, if you uh, uh, invest. You, it's, it's a difference between making a fortune and completely getting wrecked. That's, th- that's the difference. It's the difference between comp- making a fortune and completely getting wrecked. But I'm going to say this to you guys very, 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 very uh, um clearly don't think that the tokens that are right now the hottest tokens are going to be the tokens that are going to be hot in the next cycle that's why it is maybe safer to be in the safe coins the bitcoin the eth the solanas because even though a narrative was hot in the previous bull run it doesn't mean that the narrative is going to be hot in the next bull run i want to show you an example just so that you understand what i'm talking about okay this is a historical snapshot of coin market cap in 25th November 2018, top of the previous bull, not top of the previous bull market, but pretty close. Okay, so Bitcoin, $4,000. Where was that? Was it that low? XRP, XRP was number two coin. Okay, 
ETH was number three coin. Bitcoin Cash, number four coin. Stellar, number five. EOS, number six. Litecoin, number seven. Cardano, Monero, Tron, Dash. Okay, if this is what it looked like. You can agree with me that it's a very, very, very different picture right now. And that some of these tokens are, are, are nowhere to be found. And some of these tokens have moved towards the top. So right now, be in safety unless you have a real bet for what you think is going to lead the next bull market. All right. So that, that's the first thing I wanted to show you. The next thing I wanted to show you is the capitulation element of it. And as I mentioned, we are, we are in the capitulation element of it. But this is typical for this part of the cycle. And many, many, many commentators are saying exactly the same thing. I'll read you another commentary. It says, uh, this moment in the cycle is a classic, nothing strange. Bitcoin dominance rising, ETH BTC pair getting smashed, altcoin showing weakness, projects not releasing major news or not running any marketing campaigns, retailers running out of the game, retail, re, it's not, retail investors out of the game, liquidity drained, fundamentals of zero impact on the price. This is historically the best moment to start accumulating assets. I caps lock slowly because you don't have to rush believing we'll moon tomorrow because it's going to be quite a long cycle. So this is what most people are seeing. Miles says that historically there's a big move on the 21st of November. We spoke about that 21st of November date yesterday. Maybe the same thing will happen. Dan Crypto says that he believes that this fractal has played itself out and that the next move actually may be up. Rect Capital says the same thing. He says, Bitcoin halving is less than 200 days away. It has rejected from the lower high. The next 140 days may present the last ever opportunity to buy in in the sub 20,000s. So that is what happens. And the reason why that happens, the reason why this is such an important tweet is this. So Bur Burb says relative to the halving. So both Rect Capital and Burb are talking about the halving. Burb says... Massive rallies. Bitcoin rallied hard at the previous halvings, 90x, 30x, and 7x, the subsequent peak. This is the important part. This is the important part. The important part is that Bitcoin never looked back. Bitcoin never came back to the prior halving prices after the halving. Okay? So that kind of talks back to this tweet that says, you know, this might be the last time we'll ever be able to buy Bitcoin sub 20,000s. If, if we do get another chance to buy Bitcoin sub 20,000s, I don't think we will. Bitcoin never looked back after that. We spoke about the miner difficulty and I explained to you that the miners are going to need way, way, way more machines to have and they are starting to sell their Bitcoin now to fund those machines. What's going to happen is at some point they're going to have to stop selling those Bitcoin because they're going to have all the infrastructure in place to mine till the halving. But for the next 200 days or whatever is left until the halving, the miners have to sell their Bitcoin because they need the money to invest in the infrastructure to buy more machines. Okay, let me just recap that for people who don't understand. Right now, you need there's a certain difficulty on Bitcoin. And if you mine the first Bitcoin, you get 6.25 Bitcoin. But after the halving, it's going to be 3.125 because it halves the reward. So you're going to need more machines to mine the same amount of Bitcoin, double the number of machines. How do you get machines? Well, you have to what you have to do is you have to you have to have, you have to sell your Bitcoin that you've got, say, sell your Bitcoin, and then use that money to buy more machines and start setting up your farm because in 200 days, the, 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 the um, uh, uh, difficulty increases or the difficulty effectively doubles. And that is why you usually get this fractal that goes slightly down in the year before the halving. Why? Because I need to sell Bitcoin, I need to sell Bitcoin, I need to sell Bitcoin before the halving because I need to put new machines into place. That is happening right now. That is happening right now. We are 86% of the way towards the halving. You can see it's the same pattern every single time. He also says digital scarcity. Then bull years of the four year presidential election cycle coincide with the halving. And I don't know if that's a coincidence. Um, well, I don't know if it was planned that way by Satoshi, but the halving happens practically every four years, which Coincidentally, also, which also correlates with the U.S. election cycle. I don't know if that's a coincidence. I think Satoshi may have thought about this and said, hold on a second. In election years, typically, the party that's in power wants the market to do really well. And therefore, maybe the best time to slash the reward of Bitcoin in half is to do it during the election cycle. 
And maybe that is, maybe, maybe it's coincidental, but I don't know with, with Satoshi if there's that many um, uh, 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 coincidences. Then he says, institutional adoption, every halving event has historically brought a rising of a mainstream interest in institutional engagement. We know that the ETF is just around the corner. I want to show you one tweet regarding the ETF. So there is a chance that the ETF will actually come very, very, very soon. And I'll tell you why it could come much sooner than you think. Because the SEC have until the 13th of October, which is on Friday, to appeal the grayscale ruling. Now, the question is, will the SEC appeal? And if they do appeal, on what grounds are they going to appeal? And if they don't appeal, then on what grounds are they still going to deny an ETF? So there may be, someone said it earlier in, in the chat, that um, it's always the darkest before dawn. I think that's what they said. I think that the, that the dawn will be the ETF. I think the SEC cannot continue to deny the ETF. And as I said to you, I do want to show you one other thing that is related to the ETF, but I'm not showing it to you guys <clears throat> until... And unless we get 1,200 likes, we've got 833 at the moment. I know you guys can do it. You did. You got over 1,000 yesterday. Um, actually, while we're talking about it, while we're talking about it, let's bring up the, the, the thing from yesterday. We spoke about the $20 million thing. You know what, what, what Josh said to, said to me after the show yesterday? Josh, what did you say to me after the show yesterday? He said he'd do it for $100,000. He, he said he'd do it for $100,000. $100,000. He said that. Let me know what you think. Let, 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 who needs the money? No, 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 bro. No. No, hold on, hold on. I'll tell you who needs the money. Hold on. I, 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 hold on a second. I just want to show you something. Okay? You, hold on. You can't do that for free, bro. You can't do that for free. I mean, there's definitely, there's got to be money involved there. Seriously, seriously, seriously. There's no free there. So let me know. You know, yesterday we said, would you or wouldn't you for $20 million? I think today, let's change the question and put it in the comments. What I want to hear from you is, what is your number? Okay, let's say that you were f there was a gun held to your head and what you had to do is what you had to do with Caroline. What is the number? What is the number that you would need to be paid for, for you know, I mean, I'm not going to say it. I don't, I don't want this video to be banned from YouTube. But anyway, let's go back to serious parts of the show. Serious, serious, serious parts of the show. Don't forget to let me know in the number. Let me, and, and also let me know what you think of Josh's number. I think it's a terrible number. Remember, 1,200 likes. I'm going to show you an indicator that nobody else has shown you that is super bullish. I'm going to show you why it's super bullish. It's, it is related to the Bitcoin ETF. I'll give you a clue. All right, let's go to serious parts of the show. So um, I want to talk about the Dixie. So I see the Dixie is now slightly, slightly, slightly rising. It's still on this very much, I think, on this trend line. So let's quickly just draw a trend line. Uh, let's draw. No, I think we're still, we're still safe for now, I think. Uh, that could be the retest, actually. And let's see what the Dixie actually does from here. Um, a lot of people are saying that there is a, a bearish cross here on, on the Dixie. And that's probably relevant because today we did get the CPI numbers. Let's spend a few minutes talking about the CPI numbers. The forecast CPI numbers, 3.7%. The actual CPI, sorry, 3.6%. The actual CPI numbers, 3.7%. Remember yesterday I said to you, the Cleveland Fed forecast 3.69% or 3.7%. So I said, I think it's going to be, huh, Leo Messi says, Messi Leo says he, he would pay 500. <laughs> you got this all wrong, bro. <laughs> uh, you got this wrong, this all wrong. You got this all wrong. Um... Okay, then, uh, um, so we have the headline CPI, 3.7 versus the forecast of 3.6%. I actually got a text from Truflation. Let's see what they said yesterday. Let's quickly just have a look here and just see. Uh, my friends from Truflation, let's quickly have a look. Uh, inflation report, I'm going to read it to you. Let's quickly open it and have a look. Uh, Truflation inflation report. Well, it's quite a long report. Uh, bloody, bloody, blah. Bloody blah, blah, bloody blah, blah. Okay, I'll have to read the report. It looks like a very long report. Uh, I will read it. It's a report that came to me from our friends at Truflation. Anyway, be that as it may, here we are. Headline CPI 3.7, month on month uh, 0.4, core CPI 0.3. Let's look at what took CPI up and what actually took CPI down. So what took CPI up, food, more expensive. Uh, all items, less food and energy, also more expensive. Uh, more expensive. Uh, shelter, up a lot. 
uh, transportation up a lot, medical care came slightly down. Uh, energy was another one of those that went down. Now we have to watch energy. We have to watch energy and I'll show you why we have to watch energy because that's actually what this war is all about. So we have to keep our eyes on the energy cost and I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So quick recap of, of CPI. Here it is. The We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen down readings. We've had one, two, two up readings and then this one is equal to the last reading. So looks like inflation is like year on year inflation, consistent, um, w consistent, which is good. The forecast is that it's actually gonna come down next month. But as I said to you, we have to watch two things when it comes to inflation. The first thing we have to watch, watch out for PPI. Remember yesterday we got PPI, PPI was higher. PPI, P -P okay. PPI, PPI was, um, higher, that means that the producers are paying more for things and that will filter down to consumers. And we saw that yesterday, that was quite a scary number. I was surprised that the markets didn't actually react to that. Um, let's see what the market believes that Powell's gonna do at the next FOMC on the 1st of November. 89.4% chance that there's gonna be no interest rate hike. I think there's gonna be no interest rate hike. I don't think you can raise interest rates at, uh, at um, uh, in, in, in a time like this where there's so much international uncertainty. Also, as I said to you, we need to watch the energy part of it. And specifically, specifically, we need to watch oil, okay? Good news is that oil is down from the $87 a barrel. So this is WTI. Let's we can look at Brent crude futures. Uh, Brent crude oil, okay, we'll look at, we can look at the cash price, 86.30. Okay, it's slightly, slightly, slightly up. Maybe that means that there have been some, some more uh, tensions in the, the United States. But, 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 this is very, very, very important. So, there is a US strategic crude oil reserves, right? And these are reserves that the US has to be used strategically in times of war. Now, what you can see is that during the Biden administration, the US strategic oil reserves have been reduced to 350,000 barrels. What does that mean? It means that they've, they haven't been that low since 1983. Okay, so in 1984, since 1984, the strategic oil reserves hasn't been that, that low. Remember, right now, the war that's being fought is very much an oil war. If you look at the, at the players in, in this war, you look at, 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 the, at the players in, in this area, you're talking about Saudi Arabia, you're talking about Iran, you're talking about all these are oil producing countries. And right now, if you take the background of, um, of the oil reserves, it looks like, and again, I don't know if this is correct. I, I mean, I know this data it just says that in terms of days left in the strategic oil reserves, um, there are 17 days left in the strategic oil reserves. So we have to be very, very careful to watch what happens here because the US doesn't have strategic oil reserves left. If the oil price goes up, it's not like the US can go and dig into the strategic oil reserves, which it has done to bring the inflation down, okay? You can see that there's many takes on this. Um, one of the takes, which I didn't, I think that was the, I'm actually not even gonna mention it. That's how, that's how stupid I think it is. But we now see Saudi Arabia, so the, the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, he discusses, the war between Israel and Hamas in a call with Iran's president. The first such conversation between the, the two leaders who normalized relations earlier this year. So you're kind of getting Saudi Arabia, which is the other big war country. No, I'm not gonna say stepping into the war, but like, it's almost like opening the door, looking inside and saying, mm, we just wanna get a feel for what's going on here. And at the same time, what you have is you have the US Secretary Antony Blinken now going to Israel um, he is in Israel, um, and they are looking to. They, they, I mean, I, I don't. I don't think they're going to fight with Israel right now, as it stands. Although there is a, a, a U.S. Um, uh, aircraft uh, plane, which is uh, aircraft carrier, which is on the way to to the region, and that's just potentially just a sign of solidarity. But you, you I just don't like the way these chess pieces are moving. You know, you've got the the Saudis. You know, maybe moving one pawn towards. The, the, the Iranians and, and, and declaring that they like, uh, that Palestine must have the right to exist. And then you've got the US siding and then you've got Putin rearing his ugly head. Be careful that, you know, if you take all of this on the background of the fact 
that the U.S. oil reserves are being depleted at a rate that is absolutely ridiculous, you kind of say to yourself, hold on a second, hold on a second. Be careful because this actually this war is about oil. Um, as I said, I, d I do think we're going to get very, very, very gory images from both sides in the next couple of days. I think we saw a lot of the Israeli images. We're going to see a lot of the images from Gaza. Um, I think it's sad. And I think that... Um, we're going we're gonna to keep bringing you some coverage here. But, I mean, the last time we did it, our, our video was copyright struck and, and, and dirt. And, again, it's, I say it's both sides that are suffering losses. And I, my hearts are with people from both sides. People, humans from both sides. Um, this is terrorism, and I think it's, uh, it's very bad. It's, and I just, I just keep the civilians out of it. Let's just agree to keep the civilians out of it. All right. Let's talk about Sweet Caroline and how her testimony may actually send SBF to jail for life. I want to know from you, how many years do you think that SBF, tell me before, let's, let's talk about it now before in the comments. How many years do you think SBF is going to do? Tell me now and then tell me again after we talk about, um, after we talk about the next section. So I want you to tell me in the comments, I want you to tell me how many years you think SBF will do. Either he's going to do life or he's going to do 20, 30, 40 years or he's going to get away scot-free. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, just before we get into the Caroline story and before I want to just, I just, I just want to remind you guys, I know a lot of you guys have been talking to me about um, the Bybit Lucky Draw. Don't forget the Bybit Lucky Draw. If you don't have an account, get an account. If you get an account on Bybit, you sign up, you deposit 100 and trade 500, get 30 bucks, deposit 1,000, get 2,000. You can get huge sign-up bonuses. But more importantly, right now, they've got this lucky draw. And you, you do certain things, you get, uh, you can win an iPhone, you can win an Apple Watch. All you do is you do certain things and then you press the spin button and then you can win all these things. I think it's a great, 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 great campaign. Um, all right, let's talk about Caroline. Let me know. Okay, I see. Uh, Jafit says 17 years. Lim Eugene says forever. Carl Fowler says 10. Black Cell says 12. GM says 20. Dave Roy says 10. Now, let's go into what Caroline actually said yesterday. Okay, so what happened yesterday? It was mind-boggling. And sorry, guys, just remember, by the way, if we get to 1,200 likes and I see we're very, 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 very close, then I'm going to show you the indicator that, that shows me that this, that, it's been worrying me. It's turned from a worry into an opportunity. I'm very happy, and I'm going to show you why it could be. It could explode the bull market. So, I haven't forgotten about that. One thousand turned likes. I see we we we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. All right. So, this was Caroline's testimony yesterday. This is why I think she may put her ex boyfriend in prison for life. Yesterday, she took the stand again. Okay. Let me tell you. It was mind-boggling what came out of there. It was mind-boggling. Not only, not only did she admit to manipulating the markets and trying to keep Bitcoin under 20000 using your money if you were on FTX. She doctored different internal and external versions of Alameda's balance sheet that removed certain line items that included FTT tokens in the balance sheet. I'll show you in a second. She admitted that there was a Chinese bribe in order to draw $1 billion stuck on OKX Alameda used wallets of Thai prostitutes on the exchange. Caroline said Ryan Salami confirmed the identities of the Thai prostitutes. Caroline referred to the bribe as the thing. Trabuco knew about the bribe. He was in the, in the signal chat. Sam yelled at Caroline and made her cry saying it was her fault Alameda was in such bad uh, condition. Sam wanted to raise a billion dollars from the Saudi prince to help fill the hole. And, okay, I'm, I'm going to show you some other things here. So, that's what happened yesterday. I mean, I want you to get, understand how delusional SPF was. So, SPF had a shopping list, okay? Or a wish list. On his wish list, get this, he wanted to buy Snapchat. He wanted to buy BlockFi. Eventually, he did buy BlockFi, but the deal didn't work out. He bailed them out. And then, he said he wanted to be president. And... <laughs> When he said he wanted to be president, the judge was like, the, 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 the prosecutor was like, president of what? <laughs> like, just, just confirm that me and you are seeing the same thing, that he actually wanted to be president of the United States. Because, I mean, I mean, the guy is absolutely fucking delusional. Anyway, here is why she may actually put her boyfriend in jail for life. This comes from um, Inner City Press. Let me actually go here. I think it's just easier to watch and we can watch together. Just as soon as I put my volume on. Sam Bateman free trial. And it's... 
Okay, here we are, Matthew Russell Lee, Inner City Press, here, during a break in the Sam Beckman Free Trial. And it's been a doozy, it's been a doozy. Carolyn Ellison on the, on the stand today, October 11th. Um, and it finally got into the Chinese bribes. Now this is a count that the Bahamas has put on ice, said that they didn't agree to it when he was, uh, when he was extradited. And it seems like the, the, the... Okay, so hear this out. Remember that SBF was extradited from the Bahamas. And when they extradited, from, extradited him from the Bahamas, they cited a certain number of charges that they're extraditing him for. Then SBF, SBF lawyer said, hold on a second, no, there's certain charges that you've levied against us that you can't actually try in a court because they weren't included in the list of extradition charges. But it doesn't mean that they're going to go away. It just means that in this trial right now, they can't be used. Amongst those charges... The count might go away, except that it was brought in today to show motive, method, knowledge. And here essentially is what it consists of. A million dollars of net FTX's investment capital was frozen in China as part of a money laundering investigation. They wanted to get it out. There was a guy called uh, Mr. Ma uh, working for FTX. He tried to get a lawyer over there. Uh, no, they tried to get a lawyer over there. It didn't work. Mr. Ma had another solution. And the solution ended up involving bribes to Chinese government officials to the tune of $100 million through account in the name of Thai prostitutes. Yes, it's true. This case it's has true. it all. So there were multiple uh, um, uh, objections by um, Bankman Fried's counsel, Mr. Mark Cohen, and Judge Kaplan uh, uh, agreed to a number of them, but then came back with a curative instruction or a, a limiting instruction that these were not being offered for the proof. Now, what's interesting is that re mentioned more than once during Ms. Ellison's Chinese bribery testimony was Sam Trabuco, her co-CEO. So he talks about SBF, but they talk about a bribe, a bribe charge in China. And I imagine the, 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 the jail time that you will do for bribing a Chinese, I, I mean, the guy's going to jail. I, I'm not going to say for life because I want to hear uh, what, what, what you want to say. Other things that came out yesterday, um, I prepared a spreadsheet with seven different alternatives that we could send. Imagine, imagine cheating as much as that. Absolutely absolutely crazy now the best part of this is the memes that are coming out so <laughs> why are we putting ftt on our balance sheet how do you put your own stock on your own fucking balance sheet um i mean i don't know you, you, i'm sure you've heard the song he wanted to be president and now he'll be locked up for all the pain he caused you know for all the lives he fucked and speaking of fucking his ex just did him in he was a lover and her boss, you know, just send him to prison. SPF, you're fucked. SPF, you're fucked. That song will stick with you now for the rest of the day. I promise you that song will, will stick with you now for the rest of the day. Um, alrighty. So do we have, we do have 1,200 likes. We do have 1,200 likes. I want to show you the one indicator that I really think is, it has turned in our favor or is turning in our favor. And I'm going to show you why it's turning in our favor just before that, just before that. I want to just show you something. First of all, that I want to show you is that coin market cap actually have a, a chat GPT plugin, which is allows you to almost like have like an intern in crypto. So go and check it out. There's a, on their, on their Twitter, there's a, a, a um, a chat GPT plugin, which I think is amazing. Um, I did see it working earlier. It wasn't very accurate, but it, I mean, at least at least uh, that is working. Um, uh, I want to talk about that. Uh, I do. I, I, no, I want to talk about that. I, I do want to talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end. Um, wait, wait. Also, remember, if you want my show notes, now the show notes is how I make the show. I get a, I get show I get show notes from from my research team. There's like a whole lot of researchers. There is a link below, isn't there, Josh? There, today, there is a link below, right? And here we go. Oh. No, I don't want Dylan Show. I want my show. But we sh you should all go to Dylan Show after this. Um, um, so you sign up here for the show notes. You see over here? And you just sign up. It's free. I'm not asking you for money. Free. You get all my show notes. This is the best research document in the industry. I can tell you. It's the same show notes that are used for Crypto Town Hall. It's the same show notes that are used by... by I mean, a lot of people are starting to use them. Even our competitors now get the show notes. But they get it too late. So you see... They always have, what did I learn? What can I do about it? And then literally every single thing. You see, we haven't published today's show notes. You know why? Because we don't want our competitors to use the show notes against us. You see? That's a, but afterwards, they can have it. You know, I know BitBoy is struggling for content. And so like, we, we made the show notes to help him with, with, with content. Anyway, let me show you the indicator because I did promise you that I'd show you the indicator. So, 
we know the ETF is very, very, very close. And the the issue that we have with the ETFs is that the one ETF that we don't want approved first is the Grayscale ETF. And the reason why we don't want the Grayscale ETF approved is very, very, very simple. Grayscale have 622,800 uh, 622,000 Bitcoin in the GBTC trust. Now, up until now, you haven't been able to redeem your shares for Bitcoin. You haven't been able to redeem your shares for Bitcoin. What does that mean? It means that there's been no selling. If you look at the, the GBT trust, there's been no selling. They only sell just enough Bitcoin to cover their fees every single month. There's been no selling. If you turn this into an ETF, automatically it becomes redeemable and these 622,000 Bitcoin, which is $16 billion worth of Bitcoin, can hit the market immediately. Very, very, very scary. And I've always said that the one risk to the industry is actually that the, G, that the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust actually is the first Bitcoin ETF that's approved. And what you can see here is that the next deadline is actually this Friday. And it is it Friday the 13th tomorrow? Holy shit. Okay, tomorrow is Friday the 13th. Okay, well, pfft, I've got Peter Schiff coming on to banter tomorrow on Friday the 13th, believe it or not. Anyway, um, someone said, when boobs? Don't worry, I'll show you boobs, I promise. Well, I'll show you boobs. I'll show you the boobs. 100% will talk about boobs later. And they're not Caroline's boobs, okay? <laughs> someone says, has Ryan's head got bigger or is he just zoomed in? I don't know. These lights make my forehead look like a five head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's let's be serious. Let's be serious. Okay, so the next the, the, the next the date the next date here that we have is actually um, uh, uh, the grayscale beat Bitcoin deadline for them to 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 appeal. I, I think they will appeal, but if they don't appeal very soon afterwards, we could be we could see the GBTC trust converted into a um, into a ETF. That's a big risk. It's a great opportunity, but it's a big risk because that would mean that these 622,000 Bitcoin, which have been locked up and unable to sell, now become sellable. Now, GBTC has been trading at a very, very, very big discount recently. And because it's been trading at a discount, it means that people would take the Bitcoin and actually sell because the shares are trading at a discount. But something interesting is, very, is, is happening here. And this is the, the indicator that I wanted to show you. Look at the discount. The discount is closing and it's closing at quite a fast rate. If you look at the discount in on the 15th of June, which it wasn't that long ago, it was at 45%. The discount is now at 18% and you see the discount is closing every single day. Why is that such a good sign? Because if that discount gets close to zero, it means that all the shares have been absorbed and that there's no underlying selling pressure of people that were going to buy at the discount and sell at, 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 at the higher price. And so the closer this gets to the, the, the actual price of Bitcoin, the closer this actually gets to selling the, 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 uh, the thing, the, the more chance that these Bitcoin don't actually hit the market and hit the market hard. And that is one of the major, major, major risks that the, that the market is pricing in. That's what I wanted to show you. I think it's one of the biggest, most positive indicators that, you, that we've got that I don't think many people are paying attention to. Keep an eye on this GBTC chart. All right, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Uh, someone said two times on forehead. Someone says someone says bullish on Rand's forehead. Um, someone says going to Dubai today. Any suggestions for fun? I'll tell you the suggestion. I'll tell you the, the worst suggestion in the world. Okay, don't go to the five. There's a hotel called Five. Don't go to the swimming pool in the Five Hotel. That's that's the best suggestion I can give you because it's disgusting. Um, someone says, I'm going to be late for Dylan's show. Yes, you should all go to Dylan's show. Um, someone says, close some tabs. I will close some tabs. Who wants to see the boobs thing? This show, this show is so getting banned. If you want to see the boobs thing, let me know in the comments. Give me likes. likes. When I see likes going up, then I, I know that, that it's a yes. Um, check your WhatsApp. Someone says, check, check your WhatsApp. Oh my goodness, why wow, something happened? From Kyle. Likes are going up, yeah? Oh, likes are going up. From Kyle. Yeah. I, I said, oh, you sent it to me. But it's from Kyle. Kyle. But it's from Kyle. Oh, oh, okay. Big news, big news, big news. So, Whale School. Kyle is launching his Whale School on Monday. It's starting to happen on Monday. I'm telling you. It's starting to happen on Monday. If you want to join 
Kyle's Well School. Okay, check this out. This is this is this is this is the real fucking deal. Let me tell you, this guy's put in so much time and effort into this into Whale School. Uh, he's finally launched his school. This is like Kyle's equivalent of Sniper School. This is where everything comes down to AT. This is where your success will be found within trading. This is a long race. It's an endurance race and not a sprint. You have to survive in order to be able to succeed. There's a big aha moment for you. Next Wednesday is the uh, uh, next Wednesday is the this first is course. Everything so comes down to it. I will let you know when you guys can sign up, but I definitely, definitely, definitely think we can sign. We, we can do it. All right, listen, Jeez, that's very good, very good work. But I think Joao made that. Joao, Mr. Joao Felipe, we love Joao. All right, let's go. Let's quickly look um, at you guys. Wanted to see the boobs? I think on on the note of the boobs. Oh my god. Okay, on the note of the boobs, I'm gonna leave you guys. I wish you guys, I'm going to leave you guys with a blessing. The blessing that I'm leaving you with is may your, what's the word? May, may you have the mind strength of this shirt during the capitulation phase of the market. I wish that your mind is as strong as the shirt. That's one good quality shirt. No, not made in China. Not made in China. <laughs> what a shirt. <laughs> I can't. Oh, get away from me. Don't touch me ever again. What a shirt that is. What a shirt. I wish you the mind, the strength of mind of that t-shirt. Add it to the notes. Oh my god, that was like insane. Oh my god. That was a lot. That was too much actually. Oh my god. It wasn't too much for the shirt. I don't care. I don't care. Wasn't too much for the shirt. The shirt did well. The shirt did very well. Listen, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Why am I there? I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Until then, trade well, my friends.